Welcome to Sweet Adeline's International Zoom Chats. So today we are visiting with a gentleman who has been a lover of barbershop his whole life. He got involved because his mother was a barbershop singer and has always loved barbershop courts. He started directing Sweet Adeline Choruses 18 years ago and was the 17-year director of the Pride of Portland Chorus in Region 13, where they traveled to international many, many times and placed in the top five six times. And he now has relocated to Austin, Texas and is directing the Alamo Metro Chorus out of Region 10. And he serves as the artistic director and conductor for Chorus Austin. Ryan got married last year and he and Carlos recently moved into a house and we all know what a project that is. So we're very lucky that he's taken time to visit with us today. So Ryan, welcome to Zoom Chats 2020. Hey, thanks Renee and thanks everybody. It's great to be here. And as you just heard, uh, indeed we got married last year and today is actually our 11 month anniversary. Oh, so. happy anniversary. That's a new <laughs> Thank you. That's a new year, celebrating each month. Each month, that's right. <laughs> I love it. Well, congratulations. Happy 11-month anniversary. Thank so, you. Ryan is going to talk to us today about general reminders for individual vocal practice, since we all need inspiration right now while we're practicing on our own. So as, as Renee said, what we are approaching now is this, this new time where we have abundant time to focus really on our individual vocal skills. Um, and I like to approach this from a couple of different mindsets in what we can work and then just big picture things that aren't even vocal or musical to keep in mind. Um, so first of all, I like to encourage everyone to really be conscious about what it is that you're bringing to this individual time. Is it, is it vocal skill work? You know, is it um, musical rehearsal? Is it performance elements? Um, uh, we've all been there, right, where we say, okay, I'm going to sing for 20 or 30 minutes and that's going to be my practice time and you do some random scales and then maybe sing through your contest set once or twice and call yeah. it done. Um, but we need just to be a little more intentional about it, right? So, so setting aside the, um, the, the mind share to say, this is what I'm going to do uh, in that time. So along those lines, really foremostly, we have to be curious, right? As, as lifelong learners, we have to approach our individual vocal musical performance work with a big open mind. Uh, and, you know, um, uh, Renee has, has coached me many times. And, you know, I, I always say, I learn as much in a coaching session as the chorus does. Uh, we, we have to, you know, uh, realize that no matter how much we know, there's always more to learn. Lifelong. Uh, Exactly. So even if it's something as simple as just a little vocalese, you know, what more can you bring to it? Is there another vocal color you can play with? Is there a dynamic nuance you can put in? Could continue that, that mindset of, of curiosity and, and uh, open-mindedness. So many of our singers say that they don't like the sound of their own voice, even though they are singers. So how do we work past that right now when we can't blend it with other people the way we're used to doing? You know, I think one of the biggies, of course, when we hear our own voice and we're always shocked, right? No matter how many times we listen to it, um, we say, that's really what I sound like in that's the world? <laughs> Ew, yeah, it's, it's just disgusting. <laughs> um, and we have to remember, of course, what we're used to is with all that sympathetic resonance, right? The vibration of our skull, skull and bones and all of this stuff that amplifies our own sound. Right. So we take that out of the equation and we say, oh, this, this is the world. And what I like to encourage is if someone can record someone else to listen to side by side with themselves, oh. and then they say, oh, it's not so different after all, right? So that the equation is, is more equalized uh, that way. Um, uh, back in January, before the shutdown, I did a little mini recital here in Austin, and I recorded one of the rehearsals just to, to check on some musical things I wanted to do and all that. And I had the same exact reaction. I was horrified as to what I was hearing. I'm like, good God, that's just the most disgusting sound I've ever produced in my life. <laughs> so, <don't>. you know, <laughs> right, reminding myself that, oh yeah, my own experience is a little bit more cushy and, uh, you know, things that I thought I was doing maybe needed a little bit more exaggeration or energy and right. attention to musical detail. All the stuff that we want 
in our chorus and quartet lives, right? right. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the constant zooming out and saying, this is what most voices sound like um, when, we're, when we're doing that, I think is an important uh, reminder in there. Very similarly, you know, the idea of staying flexible um, in our personal practice and really not being afraid to play um, with things, now is a great time uh, to do that. And uh, if, you're, if you're exploring, let's say, you know, elements of resonance okay. uh, in your sound, don't be afraid to play with real extremes and say, okay, I'm gonna sing this phrase once just like Jerry Lewis. And you know, <laughs> as, as shut down as it can be, and then swing it the opposite way and, and you know, go like, <laughs> uh, you know, and just be that crazy and, and, and playful with it. And, and then say, okay, now I'm gonna find my own personal sweet spot, right? Uh, so you can explore that. And along the same lines, if you're recording, which of course we should be doing so we can listen back and, and learn, um, then we can say, oh, that, that had elements of this and elements of that, right? We, we want both for the ideal barbershop sound and it felt like this. So we're aware of how to, to recreate it uh, and reproduce it. But approaching it with that spirit of play will also make it feel less tedious, right? Yeah. This, this rehearsal should be as as joyful and fulfilling, I, I say as, probably a little less than as when we're on the risers, but you can make it a little fun uh, for you so you're not just checking off the boxes of um, of trying to you know accomplish whatever musical task. Uh, when, you, you watch you the, when you watch the trajectory of a human being from a child and they play all the time and we just gradually lose that, you know, how do we stay in touch with that about our voices, especially our members, really want to get things perfectly. They're very focused on doing things perfectly. And so what kind of words can we use with ourselves about playing, giving ourselves that permission? Well, you know, and right before we started, uh, we were talking about the journey from unconscious incompetence to unconscious competence, right? And most of us in the Swedish Alliance community are type A, driven personalities and as soon as we're aware of the concept or thing whatever it is right we want to go right to mastery yeah. uh, of it so i think remembering words like perseverance mm -hmm. uh relentlessness um, are really important ones because that journey from that place where we just learned the thing to getting it habitualized is long yeah. um and the great thing i call it the great thing about what we do is really work with the ethos of a professional musician in mind, right? We are taking uh, avocational singers, yeah. untrained voices um, who love to sing um, at various skill levels and giving the tools to produce a professional product. Uh, so with that in mind, we can say, okay, these elements, whatever the elements are that you're uh, tending to, are things that require hundreds and or thousands of hours uh, to really hone into a, a habit. And once you give yourself that grace, then you can say, okay, I, I can persevere and I can play uh, to make that happen, you know. Um, Darlene Rogers did a, a class back in what was former Region 24 uh, before the, you know, the convergence when we went into 13. Uh, and she said, you know, most of the, the advanced concepts that we're talking about are those skills that take between like eight and 10,000 personal practice hours. And all of our heads went, what? We're trying to do it in two hours a week. For a couple of <laughs> exactly. Right. So her point was, imagine if you took that into snippets of half hour personal practice, like four or five times a week, then you're going to really be able to reinforce that. And so now here we have the opportunity probably to do that, right? Carve aside a little bit of that time and get specific and then say, I could start making that, that journey with a little bit more uh, mindfulness. The other thing I think is so important about it is to try and stay positive, right? Um, find the things that motivate and inspire you uh, along the way. Um, that might be listening to your favorite, uh, maybe it's a solo singer, maybe it's a quartet or a chorus. You know, find, find the things that really fire you up and remind you why you love to sing. Uh, things that you like to sing along with that way so that we can actually find constant reminders of the joy that we normally get when we walk into the rehearsal hall. Right. right, so we can stimulate that same um, love of our craft 
uh, that way. And then I think uh, one of the other great reminders that I learned from Sharon Babb, uh, who of course is a genius, right? One of our great faculty and just all around uh, inspirations, uh, said, don't think of what you were doing as the wrong way. Simply think of it as the old right way. And oh. now what you're exploring is the new I right way. Oh, Isn't that, true. it's fantastic, yeah. right? So, and that, that also gives ourselves that, that sense of, uh, of permission to, to say, okay, yeah, I, I certainly wasn't doing something intentionally, right? I just learned a new thing and now I can build this new right way of, of doing it. I, I just think it's, it's so beautiful and graceful to, uh, to remind ourselves of that. In about the middle of April, I was talking to a friend on the phone and she said, why, are, why do you not have any music playing at home? And she said, you're a musician, you're a singer, you should be singing every day. So what I had been explaining to her was that I was busy unpacking because we had just moved. And so I was concentrating and very, very focused. And I didn't do it on purpose, but when she said it, I got off the phone turned music on and my whole day changed. Yeah. My whole day, I was so focused on something else and all the stress that was going on in the world. And I had taken that piece out altogether, not intentionally, but it made an enormous difference in my day. So we've got to try and encourage each other <laughs> to be just a little bit inspired and sing. It's part of who we are. It's in our DNA. We have to do it. Absolutely, you know, and I think even if we can if we can craft elements of that into like a routine, you know, if it's daily or semi daily, you know, a few days a week, whatever it is that works for for you, because I'm right there with you. Like I, I find, especially in, in these times that I've, I've actually had more quiet and stillness as a place to try and stay grounded and in touch with whatever li little creative energy I can muster. Um, <laughs> But when I allow myself to have that time of putting on music, of, of listening to something, it totally changes, right? Yeah. So I think as part of our routine, we, and, and you know, this can be a personal practice routine, routine too, you know, take five minutes and put on something just to kick off your, yeah, your, 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 your um, individual musical uh, time. And then you know, the other important reminder is to do it in a place where you think and feel freely. Okay. So if, if you're if you're homebound and you're worried about your your spouse or your children or your pets, <laughs> whoever might be listening, right? And you're thinking, oh, I don't want them to hear me. I mean, find a place where you can turn off that voice. Maybe it's in the bathroom. Maybe it's in a closet. I don't know. Um, but you know, find find a place where you can just let it fly with that that freedom and uh, and sense of play that we're talking about. Um, you know, bring in your recording device and just let it go. Uh, in there. So I, I think carving out the time and space is an important uh, element instead of trying to be kind of random about it, right? right? And like we were saying, if you wait until you think that you're going to feel like it, you're probably going to be waiting a long time. So say this this block of time is what it's, I'm going to sp uh, specifically set aside for myself. And this is going to be my uh, selfish musical time uh, to really get to focus in there. I think that's a, a great way to approach it. And there's so much out there. So Sweet Adelines is publishing all kinds of educational stuff. There's so many videos. There's free online yoga. The, 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 everything you can possibly think of, as long as you choose to take a little bit of personal time to, to focus on yourself amidst everything else that's going on. And, and you're right, we have to be intentional about it or the whole day will go by. And you think, oh, I didn't, I didn't sing today, which, which is sad. We have to keep that going. That's abso absolutely right. And, you know, we, we, we've, all, we've all heard the reminders, right? Like, like any other muscle, you know, it, it needs exercise uh, in there. So, you know, we can, we can be mindful about it. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Um, but, you know, do try and sing most every day. And lying beneath the surface of that is remember that you love to do it even though we might not be getting the, the feeding of our ensemble that way, the love of singing is still the, the driving force behind it. So we can, we can give that, those roots some extra love and attention in these times. Absolutely. Can you give uh, one tip or trick or a piece of advice to the aging voice, uh, somebody who's noticing vibrato has crept in because they're not singing every day? 
Is there an exercise we can do or, you know, does it just have to do with air? How you about know, I, I think that the, and this is true of aging voices, but it's true of all of our voices, especially when we're not using them as much as we were, right? Um, learning from our speech pathologist friends and borrowing from the school of SOVT, the semi-occluded vocal track uh, training, which has the straw of phonation, and I have my straw right here on the piano. You know, you can grab it and you can do any tiny, yep, you can do it in water or not, and you can just do a very short uh, uh, vocal ease, even if it's just something like, real easy, real short. And what you're gonna remember is that that equalization of breath pressure is first and foremost what we need to keep in mind. So this, the mechanism stays relaxed, right? Because today, uh, you know, all, all, all singers are experiencing some element of vocal tension because we are a little bit out of shape uh, in there. And we're gonna to want to overcompensate with either too much pressure blowing through from underneath the vocal folds, right? Or above. And either one of those will also result in some of that, that wobble um, or even tremolo. Sometimes it goes really fast, yeah. right? Uh, in voices, you know, the other thing uh, is the styrofoam cup with a hole uh, punched in the bottom of it. It's the same school. You seal it around your mouth, take a breath and sing whatever little vocalese or phrase of a song, and then take it away and do it again. And you're going to notice the release of pressure okay. uh, from the vocal mechanism. It's, it's wonderful. If you don't have either of those things handy and you don't want to go to the store right now, you can do it on a V sound like Victor. The whole idea is that, you know, the front of the instrument is less open than the back, semi-occluded. Uh, being the idea there. So again, it's all about releasing the pressure both below and above uh, the vocal folds. That'll give us more a constant tone. Exactly right. And if you can aim for steady legato uh, going through their airflow that's uninterrupted and even, um, you're going to get even more benefits. So it's a great way to do it as you start to sing or even just in the middle of your day if you're feeling a little, you know, attention if you've had to speak for some reason for a while and you're feeling a little, a little tired. Um, when we get back to it, these are probably going to be things that we want to do on the other side of it. Back before the shutdown, after a long coaching weekend, I would very frequently have my straw and bottle and just do a little cool down to release all of the, the right. energy and tension I had built up, even inadvertently over the, the course of the event, right? So yeah, I mean, this will work too for um, everybody that is, ha is doing Zoom meetings, because it's yes. a very different way to speak. Yes. Oh, yes, for sure. And to, to relieve that pressure is huge, right? And it just, it brings us back, and, and many uh, have said this, but, you know, the things that we're going to focus on in our individual time are largely the basics, right? We're going to keep coming back to what is our body doing? You know, are we, are we getting tension somewhere in the instrument? Breathing. And, you know, I, I share with, with uh, most of the groups that I coach, um, up until I moved away from Portland, I was seeing my voice teacher about once a month, uh, and he was the guy I was with in graduate school. And then we just continued our work together. Um, but most of the time, the things we'd be working on had to do with breath, somehow getting in the way of my own free release of breath and keeping it constant through the instrument. And that's what I teach in regional schools and coaching. And at the end of that session, you know, I'd be writing my check thinking, oh my God, I can't believe it was breath again. Uh, but <laughs> reminding ourselves, right? Basics. It's always basics. So if you go all the way back to the very earliest issues of the pitch pipe from the like 1951, they are talking about breathing. <laughs> and, and there we are, right? Well, it exactly. doesn't. Wait. Well, you because you think breathing. Well, that's something we do every day, but we we always have to be conscious of it. Always have to rehearse it. Always right. understand what's happening so we avoid the trap falls that can really make our voice have issues. Yeah, exactly right. And you know, again, these days we're gonna find like the, the human in us is gonna find the path of least resistance to, to make our task as easy as possible. And that might not be what's optimal for singing. No. You know, so again, that goes back to that being curious and open-minded thing, right? Really being in touch with, with what's happening with you right now. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Ryan. Those are wonderful tips. We we can put them into play right away, which is really what we're looking for in these chats. 
And thanks for sharing that stuff with us. It was great seeing you today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me and happy singing to everybody. Take care. Bye.